Good morning. <clears throat> so it's been about a week since I've been on. Um, I've just been busy with work and other things that have gotten in the way. But where we left off is we've got some parallax scrolling in here and then we also got collisions that are starting to work. So we've got simple AABB, um, rect versus rect, collision detection and resolution. And so what we have here is just a series of collision structs that are placed uniformly throughout the world. So we can kind of see that they're all working. So, uh, and also Offstream um, did a little more in terms of player input, so we can jump, and then we have the animation for the jump working correctly. Um, we also have different states for being able to grow prone, be able to run with the gun both up and down. So, basic movement kind of working here. And then you notice that the collision struct is uh, working in relevance to each of those states. So, and. I'm not sure how many people are going to show up today, um, so I'm just going to keep working. And if you guys want to ask me questions or whatever else, I'll try to illustrate what I'm doing as I'm going along, um, especially for playback in the future for anyone that's inter interested. Um, yeah, but I think today I might start working on. I was trying to think about this morning what I kind of want to do to get this along, get it to a finished state. Um, so I'm thinking maybe some more player input, so like shooting and stuff like that might be something that I want to do. Um, we could also start designing enemies. We might do an entity component system. Not 100% sure. Uh, we also have some more debug information starting to get filled out here. So calculating whether or not the player's grounded, if we're moving, um, what animation frame we're on for the given player state. So yeah. Hey immortal. Good morning. Part of me wants to do an entity component system just to have something like that up. Maybe something simple. It doesn't necessarily have to be generic. Uh, in fact, I don't want it to be like a generic entity system, but actually componentizing some of the data will be useful. Um, so I might do something like that. So we could do Um, let's think. I didn't think about any of this before I started the stream, so I'm kind of just going off the cuff here. So we'll see how much we actually get, get done in an hour.
Also. Could just do a bunch of different ways that we could set this up. Um, I'm not a fan of a lot of ways that ECSs are set up. Because it could be just an array of entity IDs. Something like that. And then we could have all the component data for all the components that we're interested in, right? So if we have like, um, oh, geez. Um, Actually, slot arrays, this might be a slot array thing, what we could do. But if we had like, um, oh, what's a component? Like a um, transform component. So we know that there's a one-to-one -one match between the entity IDs and then the transform data, right? And so then whenever we're doing like update, transforms and then we're just passing in um, then we can just iterate through this and determine whether or not that data is valid um, but you do want to be able to hold Really, ideally, you would be able to have something where um, it wouldn't even necessarily be this. It would be um, like we could actually do like a slot array. But then that wouldn't necessarily guarantee. So really, you'd want like a slot map but then your data starts to get kind of crazy um, because now you're having a hash table lookup into a map or um, yeah, a hash table lookup uh, to get an ID. The ID that you would look use for the hash table would be the entity ID and then you would use that um, index that you get back in order to look up the component data. <clears throat> but it would guarantee that you don't have more components than necessary. Um, yeah. And then when you iterate over them, they'll be contiguous in memory because it's just an array. Hmm. So that's one way we could do it. Um, so we could do that, we could do just a slot array. Hey, vertex byte, it's going well. Um, We have basic collision information going.
And what I think I'm gonna do now is uh, start working on just a basic entity component system. Basic, basic entity component system. Because um, really that's all you need, nothing overly complex. Just so we can start formalizing things a little more um, and then be able to have a little more flexibility in the future. Uh, yes, using AABBs. Yep. So super absolute basic collision system for wrecked versus wrecked using um, uh, 2D access align boxes for collision detection and then using that exact same thing for the resolution. So minimum uh, translation vector. People tend to do overly complex ECS. Yeah, because people, uh, part of my uh, philosophical, I guess, what am I trying to say? I have a tendency to be wary of um, uh, acronyms and formalizing certain things because they become shortcuts for not thinking. I guess is the easy way to say that. So people would like to be able to have, and this is true in software, period. Um, they'd like to have really structured, formalized, formalized ways to be able to solve very specific things that are necessary very, to solve general problems that don't necessarily exist instead of focusing on problems that are there and just trying to solve those. So I'm trying to be careful here because this could actually get way too generic than it needs to be, right? So maybe the easiest way is just to make, um, so if we have a transform component, I liked your video about the sand simulation. Cool, man, appreciate it. So we just have something like this. So we have an array of IDs for our entities. Um, and then you know we'll have some definition to say how many entities we could have max, which I don't know, maybe 10,000 entities or something. Probably shouldn't need more than that. Yeah, what tends to happen, I think, is that when you're a beginner, you actually do it the correct way. You don't even realize you're doing it the correct way. You do it as easy as possible um, because you have a very limited skill set to handle the problem solving. And it there tends to be, I don't know if it's a natural law or it's just the way things go, but the more constrained you are to solve a problem, um, you like limiting choice is good in a certain way right especially when it comes to problem solving if you give me a million tools to uh, like, for, like for instance i've said this before about do woodworking so if you give me a shop full of industrial level to industrial grade level tools like a an actual woodworking shop right rather than what i have out in my garage um, i'm gonna be lost if you go tell me to you know build a table um, because I'm going to get lost in all the tools that are there and probably try to use a lot of them that I don't need to. But if you give me, uh, you know, just a few tools, a table saw, a drill, um, I can probably do it better. Well, I don't know about that, but I will be much more competent in my own skill set and my ability to make it than I would if I tried to use something that I shouldn't be using in order to solve a problem. Now, how does that relate to software? Um, well, there's a million different things you could do and a million different 
programming paradigms and you know this, all this other kind of garbage that gets put out as the uh, one true way to solve a problem, but it's all horseshit. You shouldn't listen to any of it. Just solve the problem, right? <clears throat> So what is my problem right now? Um, well, I would like a way to more easily define entity data and uh, in one second. Thought it was an important phone call, but it's just a car dealer. I always feel bad hanging up on him because um, I know the guy's just doing his job. But at the same time, I don't care. Looking at old Doom code, the way they look up assets is just by doing a linear search. Yeah, right. So again, I'm, sit I'm sitting here like my natural tendency, right, is to think about this and say, right off the bat, I think this is too complicated. I, I think this is because I'm sitting here. This would be the most straightforward way, right? Now, the, the downside of this that you might hear is, well, so now I have 10,000 transform components that are just sitting in memory. Um, true. But I'm not worried about, you know, if my transform component is literally um, it's going to be a VQS, right? And then maybe some more physics stuff. Maybe I have an AABB in here, right? I just want to throw the, um, the physics in here as well. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not worried about 10,000 of this. That's It's not that much data. So data-wise, I'm not that worried. Again, I'm not throwing this on an actual SNES. Um, also, in terms of iterating over these, I mean, there's things that we can... There are ways that we could uh, store more data to let us know to not have to iterate over the entire list. <clears throat> So, so, just a bit of my uh, <clears throat> my philosophy on things. Not worth much, but. So I think we're going to do that because screw it. So we're just going to do a simple list. They're going to be flat arrays. We're going to have a flat array of entity IDs. Um, the way I would do an entity system is just have a mega entity. All the stuff that can be in the entity is just that. Yeah, I think, uh, didn't Casey? Miratory do something like that as well. He called it like a um, like a fat entity or something like that. Again, there's a million ways to do this. I and mean, we can look at let's look at um, an example of like Ryan. Uh, Flurry stuff. So it's dungeon dungeoneer game that he did. So here's I think this is all generated stuff too.
So I'm fairly certain this is all generated code. He's got like a projectile. Um, entity ID. Uh, let's see. I think it's something here. Does the player have? Yeah. So the player has various components. Um, so if we look at the actual player definition, yeah. So all the components that the player has, right? So the the, the there isn't even there isn't even an entity component system, right? It's just the player holds components. Um, yeah. And then if we look at the way that the game is actually updated and see maybe it's an app let's look for like an update uh, this is an actual application update i think there's a game update because this is where he's actually pushing pushing state the benefit of simple code is it lets you have a team and let's say you have a team that's easier for other people to understand the code. Yeah, that's another thing. Um, if I have to dig through like this weird um, indirection chain of inherited classes and all this other kind of stuff to understand what your code's doing, then I'm, I'm lost before I even get started. But for this, I can look at, and I, know, I understand this is a simple thing that he did for just a, a game jam, right? But there's quite a bit in here. I mean, there's an asset system, there's a renderer, there's a platform layer, he's got an input system, he's got projectiles, he's got a um, particle system, he's got UI setup. I mean, you have everything for a basic game in here. He's got audio, all that stuff. Um, but it's pretty simple to look through and see what's going on. Sphere component. So, there, so he does have a... He passes in a number of sphere components. So I want to see where he actually does that because we know that the data for the sphere component for the player, for instance, is actually held within the player itself. So uh, where would this maybe state game? For the game update, yep. So again, here's some of um, his uh, immediate UI stuff, which is pretty cool. His immediate UI stuff that he's done himself is interesting. Um, so we have player update. Okay. Entity set render, map render. Um, he also does a lot of uh, immediate rendering for his um, uh, his graphics layer, which I do as well. And where, let's see, where are you actually calling for? So let me see what player update does. Player update, okay, okay. Update his components. Okay, so he just calls individual components. There's an entity set. Game state entities. So the game itself is acting as if, um, or acting like an entity manager, which is perfectly fine. So, uh, so map initialization from a loaded map. So he's passing in that entity list. And so it's gonna initialize all those entities. Um, do default update for all the entities. So let's find, so entity sets do default update. State entities dot torch set collectible set, yeah. So he's all he has this static list of entities that he's updating. So if we can find, let's look for. 
Uh, where's my search? Will this actually search the? I don't know if this will search. Of course you can't. No, that's all game data. Might be in here. Um, see, I want to know where this is. Where are entity sets? Search in this repository. Thank you. It's a generated entity. I see. And he does use. Um, okay. Map.c entity sets, entities, entities. Um, where do we actually define? Yeah, it's this guy. Okay. So this is all um, generated code. So he has his own. Um, reflection generation system called data desk and he does it in an interesting way. So he feeds it in. Uh, what do you want to call these? Um, like schema files, if you want to call it that. It's like a schema of what a particular component should be, what like an entity should be. Yeah, so here's this struct here, struct torch, and declaring it as an entity. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, going through this might be interesting in the future just learning how he set this entire thing up um, to do something similar for a reflection system. But the good thing about this is because he's using these schemas is that everything that he needs for the application itself, he just declares and it's good to go. But we'll do something similar. We just won't have it generated. So again, we could have like or like um, uh, I think I like game context better. Entity set. Yeah. Collectible treasure chest, torch, goblin, dark wizard, dark knight, create, init, clean up. And then, yeah, all these different, so the total amount that you would get.
kind. So for his, he would have something like if we were to do this by hand, um, let's say that we have, I don't even know what the enemies are called. Um, like what are the different entity, en enemy types for Contra? I don't know, but let's say like bullet. So we have a certain number of bullets, right? And these bullets have components in them. So he's not necessarily going to go through like an um, entity component system, but this bullet itself. will have various components. All right, so maybe it has a transform component. When, let's see, vertex byte, whenever you move the player, do you separate the movement into the movement on the x-axis and the movement on the y-axis and then handle collision for each axis individually? Um, yes and no. So I do what's called um, a minimum translation vector resolution. So it's just collision resolution uh, with minimum translation vector. So I went over this in the last stream, uh, kind of how this works, but it looks at the mins and maxes for the two AABBs or the two axis aligned boxes. Um, it grabs the actual difference between those two in terms of the rectangle that it creates in that collision intersection. And then it figures out the minimum vector along the x and the y axes respectively that it needs to translate and then for this instance it's it's just going to move it one or the other um actually i'm not even sure if you do this i don't even know if this works yeah so you have you have to zero out one of these. I'm not 100% sure why this is necessary. Um, this red down here is also the ground plane for those that are interested. So I'm just drawing a ground plane to show that that's there. So we could do this and then we could create like an entity set like he's doing. So this is just the, you know, world entities or something like that. So we're really, we want to separate the player because we don't necessarily care about him being inside of this set for all the entities. Um, there's only going to be one. The entities themselves, there could be many of those. And then inside of here, inside of the entity set, we could have um, all of our bullets that we're interested in, um, any other, you know, um, enemies that we're interested in in the future, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so for the bullet, we'll have a transform component. Okay. So we can just have them hold the data. We don't necessarily need to have it structured in a separate way we don't need to have it um, like a array of struct kind of separation just to keep it more simple and then I actually already had this down here but our transform component could be something like this where we'll have the transform and then we'll also keep the uh, axis align bounding box inside of there for our collisions. 
And we'll just say that if you have a transform component, then we'll also have um, a bounding box for you. And then we can define the player as, you know, again, another collection of all these components, uh, as well as any other data that we're interested in the player holding. So again, we get more flexibility this way. We don't have to define some rigid entity component system. We get the benefit of being able to split these things up into, uh, again, like an aggregate of, of data that's in these nice component cells that we can update and abstract in a nice way, but we don't have to formalize it so much that it's in this rigid ECS, um, university paper worthy white paper garbage written by people who don't actually write anything um, so let's just do this for now because I really just want to Get some bullets going. So what would what else would a bullet have? We could have like a render component. Uh, or maybe a sprite component. Because uh, this is uh, most of this stuff is going to be part of just the same atlas, right? So I'm just going to throw it inside of here. This would be a fairly large atlas. So what we can do is for the sprite component, we'll give it and then I'll just do this. I don't care about making that generic. <clears throat> I also don't care about this. Don't care about this. Uh, we will define this, so I'll keep this down here. So we'll have a series of bullets. Um, I'm going to think about that for a second. Um, uh, what would our sprite component have? Um, probably Because the idea is that these all get put into the same quad batch. Um, the quad batch has a limitation that it can only have one bound material at a time. And the material, I mean, we could have multiple textures associated to it. But for now, the default quad batch doesn't do that. I'd have to write a separate quad batch to handle that. So, um, what do we need for the quad batch or for a sprite component? Um, you would have an atlas, basically everything that you would have for a sprite, right? So an atlas and then the UV for that atlas. And then
All right, I really don't need this for now though. Just to get bullets on the screen, I'd want to know its transform. Um, I'd want to know the atlas that it's in and the UVs for that atlas. That's pretty much it. That's all I care about. So the bullet will be a transform component and a sprite component. Now we do want a way to be able to tell or detect whether or not a component is dead. Um, hey Dendy. So it is, it's nice to be able to have it like this as long as we have some way to be able to detect whether or not the component has been deactivated. Um, so, I mean, what we could do is have, you know, how do you do, people ask me all the time, you know, how do you do inheritance in C? Well, it's, it's easy. that and then you would have an aggregation where you actually include a component T as your base and you would do this for um, all of your component types so then you could do something like um, component declaration type and then all of your code. So then we could do, that's how we decline, uh, declare a new component. And then each of those components will have um, that base type, which will include any base data that we want to throw inside this component. And then all we have to do is instead of declaring our components this way, we do it like this, where we say we're going to declare transform component T. Um, and then any of our data that we want inside of here, which we can, yeah. So, um, if you want to do it some some way like that, and of course you can probably come up with some way to make this nicer looking, you know, whatever, but this will evaluate to this at runtime. <clears throat> um, you could also do uh, I think I have this in my util, just a simple it's like a 
base macro for an object. Yeah. Default. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, so you do this base macro and it'll do the same thing. So you could do. And then that'll do the exact same thing because it evaluates to this. So you don't have to do all this. You just throw that. Different ways to handle all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know if this compile. Oh yeah, we don't have the ABB stuff done. Um, let's actually throw this below because there's gonna be a lot of stuff in here that it's not gonna know about. Still not sure how to do this. I might do a slot array. This actually might be the best way to do this. So we have a slot array of bullets, so it'd be a contiguous list. And then, yeah, because I'm not really interested in keeping that thing alive. Do I, hmm, do I care about being able to reference a bullet by an ID at any point? I don't know if I do. Do I care about this being a slot array? Why don't I just make this a dynamic array at that point? Because I don't care about holding on to an ID. I don't care about. And again, the way we're, we're storing this data is that we're not actually going to we're not storing it inside of um, just a list of transform components. We're gonna to have to update bullets by themselves. We're gonna to have to. So I mean, this is kind of um, an interesting hybrid because you're doing the typical um, OOP approach, right? Where we're considering bullets themselves. So we're gonna update all the components for all the different bullets. Because the update would look like this. Hey, it's the Noida guy. Yeah, that's me. Welcome. You get to watch me flail, flail about, not know what the hell I'm doing. Um, I 
I mean, it would be nice to be able to grab all of the transform components and just go. Right? It's like, how does Ryan do this? Because he doesn't do that. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I mean, unless he does... No, because each of the generated entities, they, um... It's not a set. Like, each entity has its own... Its own group. Ah. Uh, he does do that. Ha <laughs> ha. Cool. Okay. So does he max count index? Okay. So for each, uh, the way I'm, what I'm looking at here is um, Ryan Flurry, his uh, one of his game jam examples. Um, and what he does here is that for a given entity, you know, it's it's what you would expect. It's a group of components. But for what he considers, what he calls a set, is that it's just a it's just a big uh, group of data. It's the best way to describe that. So it's not a on a per entity basis, it's an array of entity data, right? So he would have something like, instead of bullet T, it would be like bullet set. I hate that name, but it's what it is. Instead of this, it's a pointer to a list of transform data and a pointer to a list of sprite component data. And then he would have like a count for each of these. So even have a, I don't even think he, yeah, because I mean, each of these goblins is going to have, it has to have these components. So you only need one count for each. You can keep a max count, ID to an index table. I'm not sure how he's using this. Free ID count so that he can swap component data around uh, whenever he free stuff. Right? <clears throat> so we could do So this uh, maybe entity set. Oh yes, yeah, I guess you would, right? That doesn't no, that doesn't even make sense. I mean, I guess you just you just have one of these, right? So then you would have an entity group of bullets, which again, here's all the data that you have for a given bullet. Hey, Ratchet. All right, so you have all your sprites, you have all your transforms, you have the max count, and you have the current count. And you, we could do something like that, which actually I'm kind of liking that because that's how I was wanting to do this. And he says an entity group of bullets, yeah, 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 bullet update. So this would take an entity group of bullets. Um, you don't need a count because it would just be that group itself. That yeah. Uh, right. 
which again, and we could have like a, um, entity group base or entity group T. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Thinking out loud here. Uh, for this, we would have all the stuff that we would care about for a particular entity group to be able to hold for its data. So you have a current count, and then we have a max count, and then, you know, whatever else. And then for this, we can get rid of that, and then we'll say that we have a base entity group T. Okay. Entity group, entity group, passing in an entity group of bullets. <clears throat> Uh, count is bullets base dot count. You guys following along? And then we can grab the transform component list from the bullets. We can grab the sprite component list from the Everything's compiling fine. Not doing anything right now, but um, I think that's a good. Oh no, my PC's being slowed. Um, yeah, I think that's a good foundation for this. Uh, good job, Ryan. That's a it's a good way to structure this. Appreciate it. Go get some more coffee. If you guys are unfamiliar with or have questions about what I'm doing, just let me know. I'll be right back. Setting up, uh, yeah, Ratchet, I'm doing a um, basic ECS. So this ain't your dad's ECS. Should be simpler than that. Uh, Jarvis, have you thought about doing a series on your vector rasterizer used in your videos? Um, no, I haven't. Uh, I actually haven't used it since that. It needs a lot of rework. It was actually a bit of a pain in the ass to get the animation done that I wanted to. Um, actually, in the last video, the binary serializer, I just used Photoshop. Um, so I used to do illustrations and all that kind of stuff and a little bit of 2D animation. So I'm kind of fast and comfortable doing that. So I just, I went that route for the last video and it was significantly faster than uh, trying to write my own um, path renderer and do an animation system. Go figure, right? La, 
most of my music. So yeah, this this is how we're gonna do this. So for the NAD group, we'll do that. Um, and again, if you wanna, That's too difficult to read, though. That might be a little confusing to read, though. I don't know. But this is what I like about this, is that we split this up into because what's what's usually shitty about entity component systems is you define some random abstract component like a transform component which is honestly it's meaningless in itself um really the meaning comes from how do you use the data to transform it to do what you want so if you just have some random transform component and then you want to throw that into like a transform component update Uh, what does this mean in the context of whatever it is you're trying to do? To, to me, this is overly abstract and useless. Um, it's more useful to sit there and say, all right, I have a group of a particular, let's call it like a entity archetype or something like that, right? Some group of data that together in relevance is useful to update, right? And then you want to do some unified update on that group. So if we have bullets, which is a huge list of transforms and a huge list of sprites, and we want to update that group and all of its component data at once, then we can do that. And you know the data will be contiguous, which is nice. And so in that regard, in that particular context, that transform component means something completely different than if it's, say, a player. doesn't make sense to throw into some generic update isn't that the part isn't that the point of the system yeah so this is basically what the system is right this entity group update is basically a um, bullet system update if you want to call it that that's kind of what that is acting as based on a filter per group yep so that's basically what this is doing exactly
So um, not sure exactly how to do the update for You were talking about defaults, Unity default component implementation. Um, no, they do it a different. They do it a different way. Well, I mean, kind of. They do the object-oriented way, right, where it's per entity per component. And then there's the other way where you could have um, per entity, but then you have a group of components. That's what I did for Injon. And then there's the other way where you could take it. Um, where the entities are just IDs and then you have it on a per component basis and you don't necessarily have user designated specific systems that um, are app defined. It's just a generic update depending on the component type. Um, and then you could do it where you have entity groups like this here where you have a list of components in that. I mean, there's tons of ways to do this. No one right way. group of bullets, game context. Okay, um, we can actually throw all of our globals into there, into this game context, and just start referencing that. And then our only global will be um, Right, so all this other stuff. everything that we have is invalidated so we're gonna have to go through any stuff like this right so um, what are we calling this game context let's just call it context look for anything
miss? What else did I miss? Let's see. Seven fifty two. All right, so we should be back to normal. Just everything has now been split up into a global context. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Do you think this would? Do you think that struct would get past um, code reviews? <laughs> Nope, just gonna go silent for a second. Still going. Um, favorite programming font? I don't know. Whatever this one is. I don't know, I just have the uh, material theme set. One of these that you can get. And I just haven't changed it. So, it looks good enough to me. It doesn't hurt my eyes and that's really all that matters.
I got a quick phone call real quick. Hold on. All right, I'm back. Tell her the audience is angry. Yeah, I know. So... I really just want to...
Yeah, the audio's being weird. Hold on. I think the the noise gate or something is kicking in. I don't know, this was happening in a previous stream. How you today?
Okay, I think that should be it. Game context, game context init. Don't need to do this. So we'll just call entity group init bullet t and then we'll pass in our bullets. for now. Four oh two. What am I missing here? Let's see. So this is the decal. Um, geez. Oh, all right. So yeah. So I'm being stupid here. So this is the declarations. 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 Same here. Declaration, and then to actually call it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So then for the initialization, that should be good. Nope. 391. Ah, uh, right. Um, no, that's, no, 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 no. Still shouldn't do that. Shouldn't care about this. I should be able to declare this as an entity group, but Something stupid. It's complaining about this. That doesn't make sense. the no that's this should be fine because that's the the decal should be that it declares this right but I have to declare that okay bear with me chat That, 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 yes, so. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere, 401. Should have that declared. There.
Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Let's just do this. Might be the issue. doesn't like this which doesn't make any any sense if I get rid of this and just do this instead does it care no still complains if I do that does it care no Still complains. If I get rid of this and do still complains. Okay, we're uh, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now it's because I've got this here. Um, so this shouldn't be. Jeez. These are declared. Sometimes macros can get kind of gross. Yeah. Um, Declared. I don't believe you. Four oh three. Well, it's not a member of game cons. Okay, cool. Um, so where is that? 443. It's because it's not, it's actually entities. Type is an expression. underscore yep because we're not doing that we actually want to call this we're getting there chat
So we're declaring the initialization here based on the template type. Um, it should be this function. I don't think, yeah, I'll just do that straight, just whatever. Um, I'm sitting there calling it like this. I don't need to call it like this. Um, I just need to call it like this. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And this init actually needs to be that. Because we're declaring it with that signature. OK. There we go. All right, so this is how we can declare initialization, up, down, shut down for all of our entity groups, just with all this stuff. We can declare a new entity group, um, the update functions, we'll do declarations for those. And again, we can have um, shutdown decal for bullets. However, we want to just really be like all oh, right. Um, See, so yeah, I kind of want to not have to do that, but. So this is all of our bullet code that we need. Um, the update in here, or we can move the transform along. Um, yeah. And again, if we want to, if we want to pass like random data into here, so. Update, we pass the group. Oh. Hmm, I don't think you can do that, so that's gonna be an issue. Um, but what we could do, what we could do actually, is just some separate update data if we want something. And then we can pass in random data and then use that however we want. I'm very late today, yeah. And I'm going a little bit into my lunch. I'm actually about to stop here in a second. Uh, I don't even know if I have a bullet texture. Let me look. So we're going to have to just put a bullet texture in there.
Also, the type of the bullet is going to be, um, it's going to depend on how it gets updated, right? Which will be interesting. So if it's a flame or if it's a just a simple bullet or if it's a spread, um, if it's a homing missile, you know, all that kind of stuff. But for now, I'm just kind of interested in this, this just one of these bullets, so. So what I'm gonna have to do off stream is um, get some more art assets because we don't have what we need to visualize this stuff. So I'll do that off stream. Um, I'm actually gonna call it here. Um, need to go work on some other stuff. Hey Dev. This is all Metroid stuff. So I'm gonna have to go make or collect some assets. Um, yeah, sorry man. But that's what we have so far. Those of you that just showed up. So we have a camera system that's panning with our parallax. We have collisions working, um, simple debug information for the state of everything. And what we're starting to do is move everything over into a game context. Let me pull this up. So they have a game context, a global context for everything that our game's going to use. And then we've made a small entity component system here. Yeah, very tiny. Um, don't even necessarily think I need this. I don't. So we have entity groups. Each of those groups defines, you know, like a type of entity, and then it holds a list of all of the component data for all the entities of that type in the world. And then we have an entity set, which is basically just the world. So it's like an entity manager. So it'll hold all those particular entities that are in the world. And that's how we'll group all of our component data. Um, the player itself is just going to be held outside of all of that, but it's going to be defined the exact same way. It's just a group of components, but it's kind of a specialized object. It's going to be real simple, real straightforward. And then if we run, yeah, so we're actually running right now. So let's look at, so right now we're at um, 32,000 kilobytes. So 32 meg, right? Which again, this wouldn't, there's no way in hell it would fit on an SNES, but. But that's where we are today. Um, we also have different states that are working. So a lot of the basic input is done for the player, at least for basic movement. So we're getting there. I'll stick around for a second and answer questions. Um, but yeah, then I'm gonna cut it.
All right, guys. Well, I will see y'all tomorrow. We'll pick it up and uh, we'll have bullets in there and the assets, and then we'll start working more on the entity stuff. All right. Peace out. Bye.